In the depth of winter, a deep layer of snow quiets the high desert forests. But under the surface, a secret world called the Subnivium comes to life. This is meant to be like a big block of snow. Yeah, it helps kind of break up the space, but we also wanted to provide opportunities where someone could kind of see into the snow. Oh. And so that's why we have these screens with animals doing what they would do if they weren't being viewed by humans, right? So it provides a little snapshot. So what's a bunny rabbit doing inside of a snowbank? This is a snowshoe hare. And what's interesting about snowshoe hares is that their fur often turns white in the winter and that helps them sort of hide from predators. And they actually will go below the snow and above the snow as needed. And most of the animals that are not hibernating but that do live in the snow, they're staying warm. That's the main thing that they're doing when they go down into a little burrow like this. The snow temperature is gonna stay around 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And while that might sound kind of cold to us, it's actually quite toasty warm when you compare that the outside air might be another 30 degrees colder. So this is a really kind of warm space for an animal to survive and hide from predators. Under the snow is an interactive exhibit at the High Desert Museum. With soft blue lighting, projections of snowflakes swirling on the walls and floor, and vivid graphics, visitors of all ages find themselves immersed in an environment that most will never see with their own eyes. And this screen displays what is also on this larger back wall. And then they can push a button and find out more about that individual species. So I've pushed on the porcupine, and they can learn what is the porcupine doing with the snow in, this, in a high elevation forest. And then it's also in Spanish. Under the snow encourages people to consider the snow as a source of habitat when they're out skiing or snowboarding on the slopes or just driving over the mountain passes. Children love this wall, you know, they will walk into the exhibit space and just run straight to this back and they want to touch everything and we knew that might happen and, we're, and we encourage it because this is their opportunity to get close to wildlife that they shouldn't really be interacting or touching in the wild. So it's a nice opportunity to feel like they're right up close to a wolverine or that they get to see a pika running around or even an owl kind of swoop above their head. So it's a really fun interactive, it's a good nine feet tall. Um, and so it really puts you into the scene and it puts you below the snow. All the animals depicted in this state-of-the-art animated display live in the region. You would probably never see this many animals in one place at one time in winter, but the exhibit effectively conveys how busy life is under what we humans think of as an icy, lifeless layer of cold snow. Red Fox is a, a busy the red fox is very busy. Yeah, we wanted to show a little bit of predation happening, but not too, you know, super gory. <laughs> so There's we not do, a lot of blood, blood there. There's no blood. <laughs> but we did have a student actually really like that scene. She created her own diorama and that with the fox catching the mouse and it did have some blood in that scene. Parts of the exhibit are triggered by standing in certain spots. Audible descriptions of plants and animals that live in the snow are triggered by waving your hand. Let, try fuzzy foot. Fuzzy foot? Yes. You're giving me the mushrooms, okay. Yeah. So I stand here and it just fires up automatically. And this, this is in Spanish right now. Exactly. If you want English, then try raising your right hand. My right hand for English? So it, it's, it detects there. that motion. <laughs> I'm a fungus. Yeah. <laughs> The snow crystals form a blanket that keeps me damp and warm through the winter. That's really neat. Thank you. Like all good exhibits, Under the Snow raises questions about threats to the delicate winter environment. Winters are getting warmer. Snowpacks are decreasing. Where are the animals that live under the snow supposed to go? I bet you get a pretty good feedback on that. I mean, yeah. you hear a lot of people say that that's more inviting for them. I think so, and particularly for children. They want to meet these animals, they want to build a connection with them, and the more empathy we can build, the more likely people are to recreate responsibly, to respect wildlife, to respect closures, and so I think we are establishing that and reaching that goal with this, interactive in particular. The snowpack typically peaks in late March and early April, making a visit to the exhibit all the more timely and thought-provoking. The exhibit is on display until May 7th. From the High Desert Museum, I broke Snavely for The Great Outdoors. <laughs>